Hello, 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 coaches. This is Eric from CoachesTrainingRoom.com. Welcome to the webinar. So glad you can make it. Today, we're going to show you the exact sessions to teach your team triangle passing, third man runs, and movement off the ball. You're going to love today's webinar. So thank you for joining us. Coach Mark is going to do our official training tonight. In the next 30 minutes, you are going to learn the exact strategy on how to get your team moving off the ball, creating angles, passing in triangles, and generating scoring opportunities without you having to spend countless hours searching for the sessions that will teach your team these key skills and fundamentals the quickest. Don't forget, at the end of the webinar, I'm going to give you a secret link where you can download all the drills we are going to show you today on this webinar. You have to be watching live in order to get this, so stick around. I promise it'll be worth your time. You're probably wondering why we're qualified to teach on this topic. Mark, who will be presenting today, is qualified through the English Football Association, the NSCAA, the National Federation of High Schools, and the AYSO. He has helped numerous coaches realize their own potential and has armed them with the tools and strategies to further their own team successes. Imagine what your coaching career and teams will be like after you know how to get your team moving off the ball, creating angles, passing in triangles, and generating scoring opportunities naturally. Can you see yourself becoming the successful coach you always knew you could? How would it be to have your teams winning more games and tournaments? Would that make things better for you? Then let's get started. Mark, go ahead and take it away. Hello, it's Mark from CoachesTrainingRoom.com and today we're going to be discussing triangle passing, movement off the ball and creating angles, moving the ball quickly in order to create an advantage over the other team. So it's important to realise that every game starts with an even number of players. So much like the game of chess, soccer boils down to forcing superiority in positioning, trying to, trying to create numerical advantages in order to gain the upper hand in areas of the field that are going to present us with opportunities to take advantage of and ultimately win the battle on the field. So with that point in mind, a couple of key points to, to think about. Creating numerical advantages means that your team can afford a free player. Now, in an 11 versus 11 situation, you, you can't create a numerical advantage when you think about it in terms of the field of this size. Um, so you have to break it down into smaller points. The free player in any one area of the field is of very, very little use to you without any movement. So if you've created the numerical advantage, what you then need to do is exploit that situation. Now, your job is to find the free player. You need to find the free player quickly because the numerical advantage will not last for very long at all. The other team are going to be able to realize what's happened and shift their position accordingly. So in order to find the free player, you need to move the following things. Now you can either move the ball. Moving the soccer ball will give yourselves time to maneuver players or take advantage of a key area on the field. Now moving the defense is the second point. You can move the defense by making off the ball runs so other players can run for you. If they make a run across a defender, the defender is going to have to drag their position out, which is going to create space and you can exploit it that way. And finally, your own player movement. Now, your own player movement can obviously maintain your possession of the ball, you can create opportunities, you can support, and you can retain possession, you can also exploit opportunities moving forward. Often each of the following, so the moving the ball, moving the defence, or moving your players, each of those happen as a result of the other. So if you move the ball, well, you, you, first of all, your, your player might move to a good position. You then move the ball, and that in turn is going to move the defense. So a point I made at the very start there about the field being an 11 versus 11, or 7 v 7, or 5 v 5 situation, we're just going to dig a little deeper into that now to work out what it takes to create a numerical advantage, or a numbers-up situation, as it's often referred to. To do that, we need to stop viewing the field as the 7 v 7, 11 versus 11 games, and really break it down into smaller skirmishes, smaller smaller games within the bigger game. So identifying these smaller battles. Um, here we're going to look at an example. We've got a we've got a back four and we've got three midfield, attacking midfield and forward players here looking to attack the goal. Now as things stand they're outnumbered. So if we can shift a player over this side here, we're going to isolate that uh, that left sided defender, the left fullback if we can isolate that player, we've got a two versus one situation. 
at this point another player is going to have to slide over to support to create an even amount so as you can see that situation that we started with the the numbers up to two versus one is shut down very quickly and the the team are allowed to the team can actually create the or work the advantage back now so it's on an, on an even keel at this point we can look at that space that's created here if we can get our third man running into this area we've created a little pocket of space now that off the ball run there if that's taken advantage of quickly we can play a little diagonal ball in here and we can look to to work our way in behind now that came about because we created an, a smaller first of all a 2v1 situation which turned into a 2v2 then with the third man run we, we gave ourselves the extra player we created a three versus two situation we've got the numerical advantage we have forced the superiority in this particular position and we're now through on goal now if we break that down and we look at the field to begin with we had four versus three and that as it looked we didn't really stand much of a chance of, of breaking that down so we really need to see identify the areas that we can work our, our way in how we're going to create that to our advantage and then obviously exploit that through the quick passing quick movement and quick thinking of our players as you can see relating back we move the player the player move the defense and finally we move the ball into that position now also a point worth noting here is notice how the defensive pressure gets transferred close to the proximity of the ball so the immediate threat being the ball everybody's pushed over this way to create pressure around the ball limit the space and limit the options now, this can be taken advantage of through the quick pass that we've just discussed. Equally, we also have the option to relieve the pressure. So to, to pass backwards, look for a passing option that's in a little bit more space, and from there we can change the point of attack if we need to. So now we're going to look at a session plan which is going to help us develop our triangle passing and our third man runs off the ball, hoping to link up the play, create a numbers up situation and give us an advantage on the field. So this drill here, we can see we've got three cones in a triangle formation. Each cone is about 15 yards from the other, so we're looking at a 15-yard pass. That's going to allow us just to just to work in that space there with each player. We've got seven players per triangle just to keep it uh, keep the activity flowing. Now this is unopposed, so it's just going to be passing with no pressure. We just want the players to be to be linking up to make be making crisp passes, and that is how this is going to be formed. This is going to be the backbone of the of the session itself is is making sure we're making good passes. We're communicating with each other and we're moving off the ball quickly and at the right time. So player one in the start line, as you can see here, is going to be passing counterclockwise up the field. Player two is stood by the cone. Now player two needs to check away. We're going to treat that cone as if it's a defender. So we're going to check away from the cone, create a little bit of space and receive the pass. Now in the interest of passing the way that we're facing, we're going to drop the ball back into the advancing player one. Player one is going to actually follow their pass. Now... It's important that we maybe step off at an angle here so we can open up the field a little bit to what we can see. So player one passes to player two. Player two, first time if they can, makes a little layoff pass back, maybe halfway back towards where player one is advancing. Player one's going to collect that pass now and is going to make a through pass. So we're going to finish off the triangle. Player three at the moment is stood behind player two. They're waiting. This is our numbers up situation now. So we've got the three players in effect. Two players have made a pass and the third man is going to make a run in behind looking for a through pass from the receiving player one who is then, once the ball is passed to player three, they're going to pass down the line to the, to the new player two and the sequence is going to continue from there. Things that we need to make, uh, things that we need to really focus on here are accurate passes like we said. If we can do one touch passes, this is going to be perfect. So we really, really need to set each other up now with passes that we're going to want to receive. I always ask my players, would, would you have appreciated that pass if you'd received that ball? So take care of your passes, play a pass that's going to allow that receiving player every chance of playing a good first time ball. And also don't be afraid to stop and start this activity. If we, if we move this very laterally, so if player one passes to player two and follows the direct line of that pass... We're not going to create any angles. So player one, when they pass to player two, can they make a little angles run off to the side? Because they know where they're going to have to play that ball to. The advancing player three. So can they give themselves a better angle to get that ball across first time? Equally, can player three bend their run a little bit so they can see a little bit more of the field? If they run in quite, quite narrow, quite a straight run, they might not be able to see the pass coming in and also the field in front of them. So they need to give themselves angles at all time. 
maybe even stop it, break it down, exaggerate these. Now, I always encourage coaches to, to ask players where they think they should be stood. And at that point, and this isn't pointing fingers again, this is, can I, can I be stood in a better position? Would I have seen more of the field from here? And then maybe give them both options, run it through. So say, okay, we'll stand here where we started, receive the pass from there. What can you see from here? Okay, let's rerun that. Let's start from here. Now, can you see a little bit more of the field? Would you have preferred to have that pass to here? Can you play that first time from this position? So I would run that for maybe 10 minutes there. Just keep the sequence going, just nice crisp passes. The sequence should flow quite nicely and it should just give the players a lot of time on the ball, um, a lot of repetition of passes, a lot of good angles created and a lot of through balls timed, a lot of good off the ball runs timed there. Here we're going to look at a slightly more advanced passing diamond. More advanced in the sense that we now have a passive player running through the path of where we're passing. So rather than just focusing on the technique of the pass and the movement of our players, we now have to consider the timing of the pass as well. Simple passing is going to be ultimately what's going to make this drill work. So it's important that players are able to see this. You might want to run this through at half speed to start with just so the players understand the passing movements, where they need to go and where they need to pass the ball to. The passive player who's going to start opposite the person who starts the sequence is merely going to run from the first point that they're at and swap with the player who receives the ball first time. So all they're really going to do is run across that. They can run as fast or as slow as they like. I would maintain at the start that that player always moves at the same speed just so that the players can get used to passing, moving around. It might even be that you want to incorporate players who, who understand they might be able to pick up the sequence a little bit quicker. It's important that maybe we encourage those players to get involved just to help us. It might help other players to understand the sequence. So maybe that since communication is a key point here, maybe they can get involved helping us actually make the passes. So they can help us out to start with rather than be a object rather than be something in our way straight away maybe they can help us out so we're making a simple pass in at that point once the first pass has been played that player is going to start running towards the player who now receives the ball they're going to swap places with them so in the interest of drawing that player in you're going to allow them to come towards you keep an eye out for where they are make a pass back to that player and then you're going to start that run past them once you've started that run you can call for the ball where you want it to be Remember, it's important that you run onto the pass as opposed to overrun and then have to correct your run and come back. Time your run. So once you've received that pass in and you've passed it back, you start in your run and they're going to they're gonna pass the ball onto where you're moving to. So make sure that you're, you're running slow enough and you're pointing towards where you want to receive that ball so that you're able then to increase your speed or decrease your speed to actually receive it when you get there. That way you can take it in your stride and you continue the sequence from there. So you're going to make your next pass in. So on to the key points. The key points here, we've really covered quite a lot of them there. But the first key point would be to make sure that the players understand the sequence. Offer positive reinforcement. Get involved where you need to. And make sure that this has got a couple of chances to go through in full sequence before we start correcting the technique. The second point would be to keep this drill flowing. You're going to need to make accurate passes. So make sure that the players are really, really focused on the technique of the pass. Make sure that they're passing well. Pass like you want to receive the ball. So player pass as though you would be receiving that yourself. Make sure that your technique is solid. Your toes are pointing. The toes of your standing foot are pointing towards where you want to follow the ball to go. And make sure that your kicking foot is following through the line of the ball so your pass goes to its intended target. The third and maybe the most important point here is timing. Timing is going to be everything. I want you to envision that you're actually trying to draw that defender into you. That defender's going to come in and make a challenge. So you want them to come close enough to you so that they've committed to you as, as the person with the ball. Commit them, make them move, and then make your pass. So your timing is absolutely crucial. You want to draw that defender in enough so that when your pass is made, you're giving somebody else more time on the ball. If you make your pass too early, that defender could just change direction and pressure that player. So you need to draw the player in. Also, not to forget, our movement and communication are both key factors in this. To transfer this into a game situation, we're going to create a small-sided game focused on passing, being rewarded for creating that passing angle and making sure that we're moving the right way down the field and using all the options available. So inside the centre of the field here, we have a 2 versus 2 situation with one target player at either end. 
Now both the players on the wings, they're the neutral players. They play for whichever team is in possession of the ball. So it really is in the interest of the team in possession to make sure that they're using these players because that creates essentially a four versus two, which in theory should be much easier to pass the other team by creating a bit more space. And there's constant width because the players on the outside can't come in. Equally, the players on the inside can't go out. The objective is to get the ball from one target player to the other. If the ball is completely taken from the first target player, passed infield and passed off to the other target player at the other end, that is one point. Now if you want to make this a bit more difficult, you can say that you must incorporate at least one target player on the outside, maybe both target players on the outside, and making two passes in the middle before you make the pass off to the end. As a coach, that's entirely up to you. You can make this as hard or as difficult as you like, but I would stress the importance of using those wing players because that's going to create an advantage by creating width and more players. Remember that the player is playing on the wings completely unopposed. So it might be that you want to restrict the touches that that player can have to make sure that they're thinking quickly and they're making sure that they're doing the right things as quickly as possible. So for the first time you might say you're allowed three touches. Now you're not actually specifying a time length for three touches. It gives the player on the outside firstly the opportunity to control the ball Secondly, the option to think about the pass. And thirdly, it gives the players in field the chance to move into a really beneficial position. So maybe restrict the passes, the touches that they have before you restrict the time that they have the ball. This is a small sided game, so I want to make sure that this is flowing as much as possible. Allow the players to make the mistakes. Maybe jump in every now and again just to say, okay, what went right? What could we do differently next time? But really just try and allow the game to flow. If you need to pull a player to one side, just have a quick word for a second, make a quick coaching point, do so, but allow the game to flow as much as possible. Important one to remember is if the wing player, if a player on the wing has a ball, it's not a chance to rest for the players inside. They must be moving into space, they must be making runs, looking for opportunities to get the ball. That might be an advanced run down the field, it might also be a drop, it might be a safer option, it might be a, a, an outlet pass. You can always go back to the first target man if you like so that you can redistribute the possession, recycle the ball and maybe open up an opportunity on the other side. Remember the width is going to always be there because those wing players can't come inside the field. I can't stress how important it is that you get it across to those players that that width is going to create space and with space comes opportunity. If the other team win the ball back they're now in possession. Those wing players are now playing for the team in possession. So they can start scoring points immediately. I would say pass the ball off to the nearest target player to get the sequence flowing again so they are making one complete pass from target player infield, perhaps to the wing, back infield and back to the target player. Important one to remember is that the wing players cannot score the points so they cannot make a direct pass to a target player at the end and score for that team. They're only allowed to pass the ball back in field to make a completion pass. Now players are going to know when this has gone right. They're going to be able to open up a lot of space and really, four against two, it should be a quite easy passage from one side to the other, as long as they're doing this properly. So make sure as a coach you're rewarding the good moves, the good bit of play. Maybe stop and take a moment after a good passage of play is being completed and played its way out. Maybe stop it then and say, okay, what, what went right about that? What felt right? Defenders, what was, what was more difficult defending against that than it was the first time when it went wrong? Make sure that you're constantly compounding those good points and rewarding the good. Hey, it's Eric back again. Mark, thank you for sharing so much great information. That was excellent. Wow. Unfortunately, we can't cover everything in just 30 minutes, let alone even an entire day. So we prepared a special one-time offer where you can get it all. Let me ask you a question. Would you like access to our secret vault of sessions and downloads that have helped coaches get their teams to the championships? then you will be excited to see what we have for you today. First, we have our core passing pack, three progressive four-week session plans, 48 sessions total, plus five amazing bonuses, which are downloadable eBooks, article archive, a defensive playbook. This core passing pack is the quickest way to get your team to play as a unit, make runs off the ball, and pass in triangles and diamonds like the elite teams do. We are also including for you our Elite Quad Pack. This includes the top sessions for defending, attacking, dribbling, and futsal. 
The Elite Quad Pack is a solution to building your team's all-around skill set for each position on the field. So the Elite Quad Pack includes our top 12 defending sessions, our top 12 attacking sessions, the top 12 dribbling sessions, and the top 12 futsal sessions. And it also has some bonuses thrown in as well. So what this means is that you're first going to get the core passing pack and also the elite quad pack. Now, because you're on this webinar, we are also including our gold package. This includes seasons worth of sessions and downloads and focuses on passing, defending, attacking, dribbling, and futsal. There's over 230 sessions inside of this gold package. We're also throwing in some special bonuses, some webinars, some coaching downloads, and a ton more. So these 230 sessions have videos, downloadable PDFs, so you can print them out and add them to your coaching binder if you have one. It also includes the step-by-step -step coaching instructions, the progressions for each session, and a ton more. So you will have lifetime access to these sessions. So even if you buy now while we're doing this special, you'll get access to them four months, five months. When you're ready, you can log in and gain access. So what this means is that you're first going to get the core passing pack and also the elite quad pack and also the gold package. So number one, the core passing pack. Number two, the elite quad pack. Three, the gold package. So everything here is a total value of $1,000. $261. Actually, it's over that value, but that's the exact value that we have it on our site right now if you buy each package individually. So if all this did was give you outstanding new drills to use with your teams, would it be worth it? If all this did was get your teams winning more games, would it be worth it? If all this package did was save you time planning sessions, would it be worth it? So all three of our top packages we're including for you for one price, which we have never done before. We have the core passing pack. that includes four-week session plans, 48 passing sessions plus bonuses. Number two, the elite quad pack, which includes sessions on attacking, dribbling, and futsal and defending plus bonuses. And then we have the gold package where you can access 230 sessions for life. You get lifetime access to everything you buy here today within this package. So we're not going to charge you the $1,261. We're only going to charge you $197 one time. That's it for lifetime access to all three packages. Now you can click the button below and buy now. We also have 100% risk-free 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you don't feel it's worth it, We'll give you every penny back. Just let us know. It's very easy to email us. We have also a phone number you can call. So if you're not happy for any reason, you can get your money back. So go ahead, click the buy now button below. Take advantage of this offer while you can. Like I said, you get lifetime access. So if you don't need the sessions right now at this moment, you can access them in the future at any time you wish. If you do need the sessions right now, you will have access immediately after you click the buy now button below. You will get emailed your username and password and be able to log into the portal and have access to the full package. Now, if you've been waiting for the link to get access to today's sessions so you can view them again, you can get those at www.coachestrainingroom.com forward slash passing webinar. Here are a few testimonials from coaches that have been through the Coaches Training Room program. Matt Telfer, an NSCAA Advanced National Coach and an English FA Licensed Coach, says Coach's Training Room is an excellent resource for soccer coaches of all ages and abilities. The site is very simple to navigate to your favorite coaching sessions and to find new activities for your players. Each activity on the site is presented with a video example, a detailed description of how to run it, as well as the key coaching points and progressions. It even allows you to download the sessions to include in your own collection which is a fantastic resource to help build your own session plan collection. As a bonus, Coach's Training Room also features a section on futsal sessions. Steven Adams left a testimony on Facebook. He said, hi, everyone. I run a newly formed club, Aspire FC, in the London, UK. I find the sessions helpful myself 
and in giving to my coaches to use and customize. The videos are a godsend. At the moment, we do five week modules on topics of dribbling, passing, etc. And hopefully, the U11s I coach will win a game soon. Here's a testimonial from Matt Soule, an Alma College women's coach and a Rush soccer club coach. He says, there are a ton of elements I like about this curriculum. It's very simple to navigate through the members portal. Also, activities are simple to understand and clearly explained. I would recommend this to new coaches as well as coaches looking for adaptations and fresh session ideas. Yes, if you're looking at that picture, that is Matt with his son and next to him is Wayne Rooney. Brett Miller says, I love Coach's Training Room site. I'm working the sessions into my practice plans. I coach U8, U11, and U12 teams for rec and travel leagues. So your program definitely comes in handy. Christopher Nash, an English FA licensed soccer coach and training program director and head coach says, the user interface is simple and easy to use. Coaching session clips give a great representation of the descriptions below and also are aesthetically pleasing. Vast amount of sessions to choose from in each section, making this a massively useful tool to having in your coaching locker. Great ideas and a different perspective to gain coaching knowledge and understanding. So go ahead, take advantage of this limited time offer. Because you're on this webinar, we are packaging all three together. So we're not going to charge you the full $1,261. We're only going to charge you $197 one time. And again, if you don't like it, this is a 100% risk-free 30-day money-back guarantee. So you can try it out. If you don't feel it's worth it, just let us know. We'll give you a 100% refund. Isn't that awesome? Let me ask you a few questions. Would you have more confidence as a coach if you had full access to this triple pack special? Would your players look at you differently and respect you more because you're training them with sessions that are drastically improving their skills? So you can keep getting the results you've been getting now with your teams. Or you can make a small investment and give this a shot. If it works, awesome. If not, then get 100% of your money back. Isn't that great? Also remember, you get lifetime access to everything we showed you today. Everything that's included in the package. So go ahead, click the buy now button and make an investment in yourself and in your team. This is a limited time webinar special offer. So make sure you take advantage while you can. If you feel more comfortable ordering over the phone, give us a call at 801-810-4423. Mark and I look forward to seeing you inside the program. Any questions that you have, please put them in the sidebar chat to the right and we'll get, get to them as soon as possible. Thanks for joining us.